Hi YouTube, it's week seven on the YouTube Pagan Challenge. I will be your saucy witch today. Um, this week's topic is sacred texts and mythology and what they mean to you, what you use, and along those lines. I personally don't necessarily have any sacred text that I would use on a regular basis. I agree um, that what a sacred text is to you is what speaks to you, and I think that's really the most important um, with how I view them is more of an, a way to explain the unexplainable and or fables in a manner of speaking. like. A lot of stories have some sort of lesson to them, and often that goes with a cultural um, undertone or overtone with how that is portrayed. Like, we all know a story of the child that disobeys a parent or whatever, and then something terrible happens to them. I'm not going to name any particular story, but like, this happens across the board in different types of myth and what's included in myth is often just what the people outside that culture consider a story. The fairy tales, Grimm's fairy tales and stuff, that is mythology. Um, people are mostly familiar with a lot of the Greco-Roman mythology because it's actually kind of taught in school. And again, there's a lot of things that are lessons in that. Uh, it changes over time because if you're not in that particular culture, it doesn't mean anything to anyone outside of it. So they look at it as just a silly little story to tell around a campfire or whatever. And that in goes, therein goes with the sacred text and what is sacred being totally subjective. Um, means something to you or me doesn't necessarily mean it means anything to my neighbor and I can't fault them for that if they disagree. We all have the right to our own opinion. Your opinion may be wrong, but you have the right to it. I joke, I joke. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I view it as, as someone put it on a Facebook group, a poetic understanding of mythology because uh, like the Germanic mythos of the cart, it's not just Germanic, um, but a cart pulling the sun. I just know that that is a Germanic theme. It's Germanic story is the way that it's portrayed. Two goats pulling a cart. It's what makes the sun rise and set. We know that it's not a cart pulling the sun. I believe uh, the Greco-Roman also has a chariot that's driving the sun across the sky. So we know that that is not how it actually works. However, if you take it in a little bit of context and go, I'm a person here on earth and from my little perspective, it looks like something is pulling the sun across the sky. Um, it's an easy way to explain something that would have been hard to explain. The same goes for why someone might disappear when they went on a journey at sea. Well, they were eaten by a sea monster or whatnot. Like, it kind of makes sense if you think about it as the sea could be that monster. If they were swallowed up by the sea, the sea is a very tumultuous thing. Um, at times, not always, but it can be at times. Anyone who's ever been through a, yeah, like anyone who's ever been through anything near the sea and seen a storm and how, how it can interact. These are forces of nature, which again is covered in myth. The forces of nature and the kind of explanation as to why things happen or how they happen. Um, so I think that about sums it up for this week. I don't really have 
I think whatever is sacred to you is whatever stirs a little something inside um, to kind of go with a spark joy type of reference. Um, Marie Kondo. Uh, yeah. 